<laughs> oh, you drank my coffee by accident. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, j- I just started at the disgusting. second that you did that. <laughs> For context, when we go to Dunks, you only order little cute, like, fruit drink fruit refreshers. refreshers. You drink fucking mud. <laughs> <laughs> They're the same color. Oh my god. Yeah, they are. <laughs> that was really funny. It was disgusting. Okay, so for today's episode of the Boston Art Podcast, hey guys, uh, we're gonna talk with Trevor Sullivan, yeah, of the band Bullpup, and also the solo acoustic project Zero at Best and Death to the Scene podcast. Awesome. So we're gonna give Trevor a phone call. I'm gonna put it on speakerphone, and you're gonna hold the microphone. All right. JK, the iPhone. <laughs> oh, Trevor answers. Ugh, we'll call back. Ugh, fuck, I'm congested. I ate a donut. <laughs> I'm congested. Is that the word that we are nauseous? I forget which is which. Is that Trevor? Looks uh, like yeah. it. No. Yo, hey, we're recording right now. Oh, that's so dope. How's it going? Dude, it's okay. I have the most, like, bullshit, rickshawed fucking setup for like doing this today um i don't know if me and tim talked about you last time we had you on the show yeah but you know about um my cursed laptop okay i don't know actually i don't remember so so basically um i need to charge my laptop ahead of time before we do like any recording thing or anything that involves a call because if it's plugged into the wall it will short out and um cause like a horrible hum in any recording uh and to the point it like it's it's like uh what's what's the fucking you know that like bomb that like puts out electromagnetic signals (laughs) and like it like it's literally one of those in that it like shorts out tim's hearing aids like it's awful oh my god that's weird as shit and so, like, the microphone on it doesn't work either, so I have to use, like, a real microphone and get everything set up to do, like, a- anything, even just to have, like, a basic-ass Facebook call. Oh, wow. Um, oh. And my good microphone stand broke. Yes, and my good microphone stand broke. Uh, so I'm using a bunch of laundry to counteract the weight of the microphone on the other end of it so that it stays up. I love it. You know, it's so funny, too, because we'll probably talk about this a bunch, but, like, with just DIY life and DIY art and music and shows and stuff, without your background, you probably couldn't even figure that out. That's, like, yeah. I, I'm I'm so used to just, like, rickshaw and, like, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, just, like, jerry-rigging whatever. I love that. That's um, amazing. So I think we should introduce you, too, also, to Theo. Hi. You guys haven't met, I don't think. Or maybe no. you did meet at a show. We did briefly at a show, I think. Like right before right before Corona. Oh damn, really? What was it a chess company show? Because if it was, I was in like a feverish haze <laughs> and probably just like in fear for my life, uh, in more ways than one. I think it was a house show and I came with Justin and what? I don't even remember where it was, to be honest with you. I was just like, fuck yeah. And then we went to someone's house, and I didn't know it was going to be at someone's house. And I was like, fuck yeah. And I was there for... It was Runaway After Dark. Bull yeah. Up. Oh, it was, our, it was our weekend run. Uh, oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in February, okay. huh? Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. Well, fuck yeah. nice to meet you maybe twice. Um, <laughs> uh, but it was dope. How's your car? Is your car, like, good and okay? Yeah, thank God. Um, oh, you nice. guys yeah. talked about it. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, because we were going to record last week, but then my yeah, brakes dude. blew on the highway. Um, Which is fucking pretty scary. You got fucking really lucky. Yeah, it was pretty fucked. Did you give us the, the specs on what happened to your vehicle? To be honest, my dad saved my ass, so I don't totally understand <laughs> what happened. But um, <laughs> I know that my brake calipers <sighs> broke in the front a couple months ago, and it made this weird noise. I guess when that happens, it like makes a dinging noise or like a really loud noise on the highway for like a couple of weeks beforehand, so you know you have to fix it. So when it started doing that again, I was like, Haha, I know what this is. I just won't fix it. Which was a bad fucking idea, and I ignored it. So then I had two brake calipers in the front that were new, and everything else, like my brake pads, brake lines, calipers, everything just fucking exploded, I guess. So my brake 
the pedal will go all the way down to the ground. This happened like all of a sudden. It was fine when I left the house and on my way to work, suddenly I heard this dinging noise, like something fell off my car. And I was on the highway next to the Zakem Bridge in Boston. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to Somerville. Oh. And, um, Where I coincidentally was as well. Yeah, that was really weird. I, I called you same, and I was like, was my brakes aren't working. Area. You're next to me in traffic. Can we yeah, figure this out? I was literally out? next to you in traffic. <laughs> And um, then I also called my boss while I was still trying to figure out how to stop my car because I was like, I don't want to be late for work. And she was like, why are you on the phone with me? Like, park somewhere. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, um, then I just rolled to a stop. I just kept rolling and got off, like, in Chelsea and wound up in a parking lot, like, on the side of the highway and just parked there and called Brian. I was like, and I need your AAA. And a tow truck. Yeah. Yep. And I got my car back last night. Just Corona days. That even had nothing Damn. to do with Corona. That was just a me thing. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. Yeah, Trevor, you are probably one of the maybe three to five people that I have kept in, like, uh, reasonable contact with. Like, even a, a, any, like, at all, pretty yes. much? Right. I, I think same, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Outside You're... of, like, the immediate circle, that's, like, pretty e- much same. Exactly. Yeah, and it's so funny, because while me and you weren't on maybe the same path, at the at the before before corona we definitely were you know in the same circles and like on similar avenues of life and art and stuff nine thousand percent yeah also i love you so yeah you too (laughs) no we've actually we actually definitely have to look at it it, like 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 uh, like we objectively we have known each other since like 2015 that's so fucked. But it doesn't really <laughs> feel like it because, like, we met or played some shows together back then, but then I don't think we knew each other in a legitimate way until maybe a few years later. No, I just, I was scared because I was like, oh, they're really good at music and I want to be like that. And then I just got, like, really shy and would hide all the time. Aww. But you, you <laughs> saying, like, you saying, like, the year 2015 and that actually being, like, an accurate time of when we met makes my blood turn into dust. Like, I feel so old. I'm, I'm, like, oh, yeah. I'm like actively becoming like a crypt dweller as we speak <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah if it wasn't for the the vitamin D supplements that I was gifted to by Theo's mom when I had COVID <laughs> I would I would be dead I wouldn't I wouldn't have gotten any sun whatsoever <laughs> no vitamin D at all Oh my god! <laughs> that was so funny, actually, that you mailed us those. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, we, I, I don't, I don't think that they. I could not tell you if they affected the way I feel at all. I have no clue. It, I, I could have been taking sugar pills, and I, and that would have been more noticeable. I feel like it was just nice when we it helped, though, I think. to get a care package from a mom, though. It yeah, like, that was pretty helpful. sweet. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good now. Yeah, holy shit! So, but yeah, it's just all. What's up? It's pills for the soul. Yeah. For the, it, heals yeah. you, it heals you, like, in your mental state. You're like, yeah, oh, yeah, no, I can cling to life. Like, <laughs> this is good. This is working. This is helping my bones and skin, maybe. <laughs> is that what it does? I don't know exactly. I just think of vitamin D as in terms of the sun, so I imagine that most people consume vit- or get vitamin D through their skin. Yeah. Is that a crazy thing to think? Is that? No, I think that's true and i know that usually like vitamin d is um if you're not getting enough sun they'll yeah. like um uh, prescribe it to you because like i don't know what vitamin d is used for but i know it can like really horribly fuck you up and you can get like i think you can get jaundice if you yeah. don't get enough of it like it's like it'll really wreck your day yeah holy shit I've heard that a lot of people in new england have a vitamin d deficiency in the winter time because everyone just hides in their house the whole time I've heard that from my mom. But <laughs> <laughs> Who could say? It sounds true. Yeah. But yeah. But Trevor, do you think that... It's kind of funny because I think of myself like, and me before the pandemic as two different people at this point in time, I think. Do you feel that way as well with like your art and music? Because I haven't been connected to anybody really through the, in, in my music universe. Like, um, I'd all. say, nine, yeah, I'd say like nine million percent. I think that uh, mine and like kind of bullpup specifically as a whole, it, it, it's kind of there, there's a little extra on it too, just because we were lucky enough to get the whole New York situation, and that was just kind of that changed a lot of things. 
Um, but I think the dynamics of like a lot of my relationship with art and a lot of things. And honestly, when we had that talk with you on the podcast and a couple of uh, select conversations I had with Joel really kind of changed my perspective on things too. Hmm. Uh, I think it's a lot healthier now. Me too. I, I think I am like uh, less on the path of uh, just uh, assured ruination probably now like yeah. i think i'm just a little bit more in control of the ship instead of just like lighting everything on fire and sitting in it and being like no this is good <laughs> yeah. this is what it means to make um yeah i don't it, it's hard to say because we had the new york situation but i if it, if it was like because of the pandemic or it's just like i am becoming a mature uh mm-hmm. individual but i i I don't know. Something has definitely shifted. Yeah, I feel the same way. Could you talk a little bit about the New York situation and what what that is specifically, if if you can give any details? Of course. Um, So we... Uh, when we were recording, uh, Bullpup? my band Bullpup, yeah, that, that, gotcha. that, that would probably, I, I see where you're going with this. I should give context to who I am. Hi, I'm Trevor <laughs> Sullivan. I sing and play guitar in a band called Bullpup. <laughs> um... Uh, and we just, uh, over the last summer, we were fortunate enough to record an album in Brooklyn. Ooh. Um, and we had booked it ahead of time before the world had shut down. Mm. Uh, and the intention before we even knew that COVID was going to be a thing was to live in the studio for essentially two weeks and record it. So it ended up working out really well because we could follow COVID guidelines and stay locked in and, you know, safe, be with the same people. We were all tested before we went in. Um, And we basically hunkered down and just kind of lived with each other for a little under two weeks and knocked out an album. That's That's fucking awesome. awesome. Wow. Um, So, yeah, because that's a problem. I know I know many bands uh, that personally that uh, ran into the problem of not being a part of the same pod. That happened with Boxer's Jaw with me and Nick where, like, we have been quarantined separately uh, in the beginning and, and still currently because... Uh, so so we haven't been able to practice or work on fucking anything. Boxer's Jaw has been on literal, like, li- a literal, like, hiatus since last... Since for over a year now. Yeah, we literally just got lucky. And, like, we didn't... It was weird because we didn't write the album together. We right. wrote the album all from our rooms and we just all happened to have audio interfaces and those of us who didn't we like would take turns and like essentially mail them to the other person and be like okay this demo is done for me like here's all my parts your turn and it sucked because like you're not writing in the same room as the person but um it's interesting i think if covid had anything to do with like changing my perspective with my art just in how I create I think it made me a little bit smarter about it from that because instead of constantly looking at the full picture we like by necessity had to get really really granular and do like step by step and make sure that everything was like in its proper place so Mm. because we just had to take turns essentially as opposed to all sitting in the room knocking it out and being like oh yeah cool that that's what it is now yeah there's definitely had to go one at a time yeah, there's a lot of pressure. Even if you have the best relationship in the world with the people you're recording with, like it definitely changes shit when everybody's in the room with you just kind of looking at you or yeah. on their phone. And it's like totally chill, but they're like waiting. <laughs> right. <laughs> and today might be vocals and bass day, or it might just be like vocals day, or but only if you don't fuck up a million times. So I could definitely see how that would slow down the process in a really interesting way. Because, like, one thing that I found that I feel like I've talked about with, like, a million people now at this point is um, that I lost the sense of, like, I got to a point, I think, over the years, obviously before all this, where the audience was, like, a a second person in my studio and in my mind and in my writing Mm -hmm. all the time, where it was almost like I was consulting the people who would be hearing what I made or seeing what I made without realizing that I was. 
you know what I mean? And now to yeah. be in a, a world where it just doesn't even fucking matter. Like, I don't... Like, sometimes I, I'll make a slew of fucking paintings that I don't even fucking show anybody. Because I'm not even, like, thinking about it. Yeah. Really? Oh, my God. Ah! Don't crash my car. <laughs> Sorry. I, just got I almost crashed the car. Oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Trevor. <laughs> Apologizes to me for crashing Theo's car. I, I almost did. Oh, oh, cool. It's all good. Sorry, Theo. Sorry, everybody. Sorry to my friends and family. I don't even know what I was looking at. Sorry, mom. Jesus, Sorry, dad. number one all day. It was a slight. It was a. It was one of those situations where you're in traffic, but everyone's going like one mile an hour, no like at, at the absolute slowest pace ever. So. And, and somehow it's still like being in a piranha pit because it's driving in the Boston area. So it's yeah. still is just like risking yep. your life just by existing in it. Yeah. We yeah. Uh, <laughs> were characterized recently by Joel Mangian of, of a, of a adjacent podcast, um, uh, as people talking about life, driving around Boston while sometimes talking about art history. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it, yeah, it's a pretty decent uh, characterization of what we do. Pretty accurate, yeah. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That just kind of fu- that just totally fucking like face fucked my my train of thought. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. You were saying you were saying um, <laughs> changing the relationship and uh, with art and uh, getting granular with it and having to take turns with people and writing with the mm. audience as a second right. Member in the room yeah, yeah, yeah. And- the Forgive me, I just make paintings. I don't know what granular means. Um, uh, I probably don't either. I'm probably a fucking idiot. But <laughs> no, in my, I don't think in so. my mind, uh, what I what I what I mean by it is just like getting really down to like the small parts, as opposed to looking at it as the whole, hmm. and then backing out, and then looking at it as the whole. Once you know that all the tiny things are in place, um, it it was just good to listen to each other and be aware of each other because I don't think we 100% were um, we also like just melded more with having Robbie in the band because that's still mm. like kind of fresh and new and another element that we have to deal with so instead of four people it's five people and three of them are sitting in the same frequency pocket so how do you arrange mm. to make that work um, so just for my knowledge who what are the names of the people that are in the band so um we have uh, Brian Gavin Bisson, okay. who uh, uh, his name changes every day, and everyone <laughs> calls him something different, and that poor child. Uh, we have Tim <laughs> Collins, uh, who plays bass. We have Robbie Beeland, who plays guitar. And then there is John Garnis, who also sings in the band and has a few songs of their own, and is my darling, and plays keys, and I love them. Very cool. Uh, awesome. I miss John. Is, oh. Man, John got the second shot like two days ago, and Ooh. they literally just went into like a feverish oh. state because their immune system just hates them. Like they, <laughs> they just always catch everything. Oh. I don't know how they haven't like died. I'm the, all of I'm the same way. Honest. And um, they were, they, they texted me at one point and they were like, I just realized I've been listening to the song Bella Ciao for three hours, and I thought I was listening to a playlist. <laughs> I was like, that sucks. <laughs> the second so is sick. rough. That's really rough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. They are, they are ill from that second dose. I can't wait for mine next week. I, I hope that it's my ruination. <laughs> you know what's funny is I, I got COVID, and I got, I got it like... Oh shit! No turn on red. I got it. I was like really sick. <laughs> Not. I was the. I was. I definitely had symptoms. But when I got the vaccine, I had no. I was completely un, un, unaffected by the second shot, which was super the fir- dope. The first one didn't even phase me, and um, I didn't get it. But um, Papa Ron, my lovely father, uh, got it. <laughs> And he was just like chilling in the house, and I had to quarantine because we live in the same house. And so he was on like the first floor, and I stood on the second floor. And like he had it wicked bad, and I just kind of assumed positive because uh, I had a little cough, but I was like, I wasn't that sick. But I got the first shot, and it didn't bother me at all. Wow. Damn. 
Yeah. yeah. The first Weird one for time. me was pretty easy. And then the second one, I was like, fucked. <laughs> I didn't expect it at all, but it was rough. On top of that, too, like, I am not, like, a conspiracy theorist person. And I'm not really afraid <laughs> of medicine or medical care. Because I've, like, had... I have a lot of medical like experience as a patient just with different conditions and shit that I've had so like I'm like pretty comfortable like being like all right this is a random medicine that I've never heard of that I'm just going to consent to taking right now but (laughs) despite that comfort I I have developed over time I was still pretty fucking scared of the vaccine yeah you know what I mean I was still like holy shit what if like what if I'm one of the fucking people uh, on on like a like a fake news virus website that like <laughs> is like the one guy in on, in North America that like my skin just like fucking turned green and I melted and fucking <laughs> my bones turned into ash and I died because of it and like yeah, nobody like even believes it happened. Have claimed another. Yeah, and like and nobody. <laughs> it's covered by no news websites except fucking some bullshit that nobody <laughs> Everyone believes. Everyone thinks it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, holy shit. That would fucking suck. So I thought that that would be me, despite my better judgment. <laughs> but luckily, luckily it was not. Yeah. Nice. You live another day until you end up crashing Theo's car. Oh yeah, my seriously. God. It's game over. <laughs> I drive this car all the fucking time. You've almost crashed it more times than me. I have almost We're talking about a car accidents too much, knock on wood. I'm yeah. not superstitious. <laughs> yeah, I'm not <laughs> let's... to like, curse you. Yeah. I'm like casting X's over here like some kind of apple. Just sending X's <laughs> through the podcast to us. Yeah. 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 I'm hey guys, straight. I love your show. I'd really like to be on it. Also, what if I caused die? Like, yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, if it's going to happen, it might as well be while we're recording, right? Can proof. you imagine? <laughs> We'd end up like the 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 pro the the narrator in the in the song "Stan" by Eminem featuring Dido, oh my God. where like Ow. we wouldn't be, <laughs> we wouldn't be able to, to post the the recording that we made, hoping to I I don't know about you guys, but I was planning to send this episode to Eminem. Oh wow! As a uh, uh, as, anyway, never That'd be mind. Good. I lost that bit. I prefer Skittles, but yeah, okay. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Yeah. God, I love I love comedy. I'm really glad that we're all the funniest people in the world. Yeah, it's, it's, it's encouraging to be one of the funniest people in the world. I'm a student of the craft of, of comedy, and I actually consider myself more of a jester. Ooh, classy. Wow. Yeah. I got, yeah. I'm, I'm wearing the outfit right now. <laughs> they are, actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, that, that's my new, my, my, uh, my new aesthetic post. That makes sense. Post-vaccine. I didn't know where you were going with it when you got dressed this morning, but yeah. it makes sense now. This is my post-vaccine identity. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking hot in this car. It is, yeah. Yeah, we've kind of also, we've kind of let go of the fact that we're an art podcast. <laughs> like, we just, like, kind of just said fuck it. Like a little oh, while I ago. To every episode, I've listened to really? episodes multiple times. I don't oh, ask awesome. to be on shows I don't listen to. Oh, if I get wow. asked, I'll come on, but I don't ask to be on shows that I don't listen to and genuinely adore. Oh, I oh appreciate that's awesome. That. Well, welcome, wow. welcome to welcome to your phone speakers on Spotify in the future, <laughs> dude. So this is I, me yeah. talking to you in a week or so, listening to yourself on Spotify to see if you sound stupid. I, I newsflash, like that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Trevor Whoa. of the future. You sound cool and smart. Dude, shave. Um, that, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I have to say to that guy. Um, <laughs> literally, last episode, I think it was last episode or the episode before it, you, guys, you were talking about, um, oh man, I wonder if we wicked anyone out because we were talking directly to them because you like directly referenced the audience at one point. And oh, I was did like, we really? I, yeah, and I was like, I feel like that's a really normal thing, but then both of you like went into like a slight panic you were like oh man this might be really like not good <laughs> i was like no, i think it's fine and then it ended up coming around and being like really funny and like way too meta for its own good <laughs> and i was like oh this is great content that's really funny i that, will that's say the episode we named out Althea, i think and we were like oh fuck oh no we're sorry <laughs> Sorry if you're listening to this. This is wicked awkward. Sorry again, Althea, if you're listening again. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is number two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. Man. Yeah. Are you doing it again? Is this weird? 
probably. <laughs> no, it's great. Okay, good. It's great. Cool. Oh, we're it makes in, everyone um... feel special. It makes you feel like you're acknowledging them and that they are being rewarded for listening and sharing the experience with you. And you know, they're like they're like sitting in the back seat of the car that you're totally not going to crash. <laughs> we don't know. Stay tuned. We're incredibly safe. <laughs> oh my god, this is this could be a morbid flashback and that's when they curse themselves. This is going to be so not Can funny. Can you believe like they talked that. about that like a month before that Stop it happened? Stop that. Don't say that shit. God, I'm an asshole. I'm like poking this bear. Like, I feel like I'm making this happen. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. We're sick people. Anyway, this is the Boston Death Podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we were actually thinking, Trevor, too, before we recorded this, that because this is not this is a bit of a teaser because it's not it won't be out until uh early may but we did a a crossover collaboration episode with a uh black market therapy with joel and matt yeah so and we're thinking we're like i wonder if we're just gonna have oh my gosh jogging man with a death wish (laughs) (laughs) um we were talking about the idea of having a crossover episode with death to the scene and we just didn't we just didn't talk to you about it until right now. Oh, great. <laughs> so maybe maybe that this could be that, that could be this. Who who could say? Dude, oh, uh, if we're doing it uh, uh hello ladies, gents and days of the world. Welcome to the Death to the Scene podcast. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Trevor Sullivan. Uh today's sponsor is uh Fuck Ass. Uh bring your hexes and your cars and we will make car crashes for you. Fuck ass. Use my code Death to the Scene. That's D two T S podcast at Twitter dot fuck you. Um Ah, this this sucks. This bring, is so <laughs> bring your cars and asses. Is bring that what you said? Or hexes and, and cars? <laughs> I don't even know. I like go into like a uh, a blackout mode whenever I do the spiels at the beginning and the end of the episodes. I'm just like reading like, uh, if you want to support us, go follow us at blah 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 blah. Because it's just so like muscle memory at this point. Seriously, and I I literally could like be reciting like hymnals, and I wouldn't even know. I just <laughs> I just shut my brain shuts off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <coughs> yeah. I fucking feel like I black out when I'm recording these po- whole podcast. Yeah. Like I don't even know, dude. Especially like when we've been talking for like an hour and a half or something. We're just like, what the fuck are we <coughs> even talking about? Like when we first started, we used to like think of topics and like try and stay on point the whole time. We just end up like fighting and like scrapping. Yeah, we get like so anxious <laughs> and be like, we can't topic. post this. This isn't working. We can't post this. <laughs> the episode's ruined. If you like. <laughs> lose your autonomy though if you are like relatively on track that's kind of how you get to the deep stuff a lot of the time yeah um that's kind of why i like pushing the death to the scene stuff like it's a little bit longer than a lot of other podcasts Mm. but it's the whole point of that show is just to like be really really casual with an artist and just get to like know them in their most normal form yeah so it's more about like the artist representing representing presenting themselves uh in like an earnest and just like themselves way and because nothing's gonna sell anyone better than them just being like the person that they are you know yeah. like we we have instagram and all that shit to see the product it's kind of cool to just like hang out and let them be humans and a lot of the time it, they can like uh, relax a little bit because they're used to other shows or whatever and it's a way more uh, kind of and what was your favorite tour story? Oh my god! Tell me about your inspiration for why you chose a C chord there, and like whatever, and just <laughs> like, and what and what does it mean? You know, right. like it, it can it can just kind of be like, hey, we're having fun. Sometimes it gets serious. Sometimes it's just absolute absurdity. But no matter what, it's like genuine and like no pressure. Yeah, that's the stuff that's really cool too. Because it's like I think when you look at things um, from a historical lens like you have a really wide view on stuff the things that you want to know about different creators in like for me art history or music history whatever is like what kind of person they were and like everybody talks about like oh if I could hang out with this person or have coffee with this person this is what I would say I feel like that's the kind of thing that we try to document too with the conversations or interviews we've had scheduled and the ones that we've done in the past is like just trying to get that vibe because that's the rarest thing I think the prepackaged version you can get from any artist it's just like the real raw essence of who a person is that's more fun to listen to i think i completely agree and one thing too that i'm sure you've talked about this trevor in like a million other asset 
facets of your life and on your podcast, I'm sure, or with other people. But one thing we keep running into with our podcast and with other people that we talk to is that 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 feeling of before, during, or after a show when you're outside talking to like three people that you might kind of know, but like it's like a discussion about like the fucking truth of the universe and it's like the <laughs> yeah. most interesting conversation you've ever had in your fucking life about something that you don't even know anything about but you're just talking to like a couple random people and that is the effect that we that, uh, that I think we're striving for or that is almost this like ideal that is like so missing from my life definitely cuz like I do not like th- this podcast is probably the other the only way that I'm personally getting to experience that feeling that's just like lost now. Yeah. It's from from times long ago. Yeah. But never forgotten, always holding our hearts. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I don't know. It's good to to I yeah, so I guess I agree with you. <laughs> Ooh, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> in in kind of the perspective of of not really trying to interview people per se, but just trying to actually capture someone's authentic just like essence yeah. and just to have fun. I'm in trying to like see their aura, bro. Seriously yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Not for real. I also I just think it's really funny that like I know it's it's kind of evolved from what the initial like mission statement you guys had and it's just like branched out to something that's really cool. But I really like that it's like the Boston Art Podcast and you guys are both like fam- like really good physical artists and you already had an interview with a really good like physical artist and then I was just like, "Hey, I don't do any of that. Let me on." <laughs> <laughs> And you were like, yeah. So yes. I appreciate well, that. Well, something, too, that I think that we, me and Theo, like to think of ourselves as kind of against the grain with this type of idea, like every single person who has a version of this idea. But, you know, I can, I guess I'll speak for myself in saying that our, our perspective on what an artist is uh, is definitely is extremely broad. And I like to... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, I I think that what is and isn't art is a pretty interesting thing to talk about. Mm. But, like, I also am a fan of, of conceptual art. Like, do you remember when that banana taped to a wall went viral? <laughs> remember that? Dude, Maybe? Anybody? That anybody? so dope. Dude, yeah. I fucking like loved that. Yeah. That I was hyped. I'm that, was that cool. I'm that guy. I'm the guy that saw that and was like, "Fuck yeah." <laughs> like I'm the I'm the fucking dumb asshole that that su- that supports people like that and is the reason that assholes like that can do that. Cuz of people like me who appreciate it. <laughs> so. I'm the kind of guy who wanted to know uh, what kind of duct tape that they used to take that banana up because bananas aren't like inherently light that just one piece of duct tape would hold it to the wall and I'm really impressed with whatever duct tape held a banana to a wall that's and actually the like first time I've heard it. anybody say that about that piece that's a great fucking point that actually is like the, <laughs> that's like the only interesting like critical point I've heard someone make about about the banana was it a real banana yeah I'm pretty sure it was well I actually read it was about the guy gorilla tape yeah, yeah. <laughs> I read about the guy a little bit. I forget his name, but he was an artist that actually that was actually using bananas as a motif in his art, oh. and was a sculptor that I think had made some bronze uh, bananas, oh. or had done some lo- like casting of, of bronze bananas or banana sculptures or something. Fuck, there's a cop behind me. That leaves me more getting... questions oh, than answers. Oh shit! Really. Shit! Oh, Woo! Oh my god! Let me just fucking smash into this guy while the cop's trying to get around me on the street. You're coming off as a crazy driver. Right I'm now. literally not even a bad driver. <laughs> like we're just—it's just kind of busy right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I guess the guy was going to put a bronze banana or something. Maurizio Catalan? Is that him? Yeah, yeah. I think that's right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, yeah, I don't fucking know, but. Maybe Why he just bananas? he probably just had a fucking moment and like maybe maybe he just totally fucked up and like had like a bunch of shit planned for Art Basel or whatever the fuck. But like up, he just Jeff. yeah, he just like had an anxiety attack and just fucked and just submitted the wrong thing. He or, did the right thing, honestly. He made news. That's that true. Fuck, we're at the uh 
You know what? I'm going to fucking take a right. This is a street that I definitely might not normally go down, but I'm going to. Yeah, do it. Go right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, like, hang a right. I really like the idea of maybe, like, he was just like, oh, I, this is, like, the perfect banana for this piece. I don't want to misplace it. Let me just tape it here. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just, like, this store is this. Look so good. <laughs> yeah. They caught it before it was done. <laughs> he was like, yeah, that's the piece, I guess. <laughs> what a guy. What a world, man. But, yeah, no, though, to circle back, um, I completely agree with what you're saying about art being a broad thing, because I think, especially in the lens of when we were talking about trying to capture more of, like, what people are like and the reasons that they're into what they're into versus exactly what they did and why they did it, um, it really doesn't matter what kind of work somebody creates as long as they're doing it with authenticity and integrity. Or those aren't the right words, but, like, really meaning what they do and enjoying it, I think, is the important part. Mm. It's uh, it's chasing your bliss, like yeah. without like any like you know corny like leave the Bed Bath and Beyond like wall <laughs> portrait out of it. It really is just like this is this is you, man. You yeah. Do it. Yeah. Talking to anybody about something that they're really jazzed about is fun. Mm. I was at the skate park the other day with Brian, and they were skating, and there was an eight-year-old kid that was talking to me about his Pokemon cards, and he was so yeah. fucking excited. And I was just sitting on the wall, and he was showing me all of his Pokemon cards. And um, then he had to leave, and then he came back five minutes later, and he was like, I'm so excited I get to stay longer because my Nana's car battery died. Isn't that great? And I was like, that's it. <laughs> he was just sitting in her car listening to, like, an audio book waiting for him to be done. Oh, yeah. That's well, he's just not even skating. <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, wow, yeah. what a funny child. Chasing his bliss. But, yeah, no, it's like, yeah, I think, too, and something that me and Theo have done a million times, and I'm sure you have, too, with your interest, Trevor, is you, you know, you learn about the personal histories and stories and all these, like, interesting background details about artists that you love and that you care so much about and that you're such, like, a supporter and fan of and, or even people that you don't like that you just know a lot about or whatever. But, like, one thing that I see that's so consistent in learning about these people is a lot of the times like somebody's art or some things that these people thought were their magnum opus most important creations or things that they cared most about are not really even the point or not even the most interesting thing about these artists and these creators but it's mostly the life that they lived and the things that they did and their personal connections and maybe their families or the you know the things they they did and left behind and I think that that's something that I really try to focus on in my life that I didn't before like something that I I didn't really focus on that before the pandemic probably even and like I was so focused on I was almost like a conceptual materialist uh if you'll hear me out where I was so obsessed with yeah that's a nice that's a nice tag um where I was so obsessed with leaving behind my ideas and things that I created but I wasn't really focused on on actually living my life and because mm. I don't know man like there's a there's a real big chance that when I die I'll leave behind seven fucking thousand paintings that like get thrown into a trash compactor and that won't ultimately won't matter because I'll be dead but what will be left behind even if it is finite is who I connected with and who I talked to and who I was around and who I loved and who loved me you know what I mean and yeah shit that I I don't know and I think that's like honestly I never I did not think that that was more important than my art because I was really I was really attracted to that idea of antisocial like hermit like sacrificing everything to just be the best artist yeah but like I don't give a fuck about that right now I don't know man interesting like I'll, I'll sacrifice uh... like fun bullshit like I'll sacrifice a Friday night that could have been a good time to work on something like that's not that that's not so much what I mean but like I got to a point where I think I was sacrificing real shit like real connections that were that would that I was probably kind of fucking up by doing that you know what I mean because like missing one show you know whatever like it's my friend's band I've seen them play I love them but you know that's one thing but like I don't know I don't know but yeah, I think I think that's an interesting take because I think personally, with Bullpup specifically, our whole the whole premise of Bullpup, like the foundation of it, was the art needs to make those connections, mm. and it, it was all about like 
it's all about like building that and like living that and having people live that with you Hmm. um not that we're gonna like just put out any old slop but the music can be as good or as technical or whatever as you want but if you're not like taking care of the people that are invested in you and you're not investing in them back and you're just like i must find the perfect song or you know perfect whatever and you're never like looking back at like what you're actually doing it for or like really assessing why and you're not just like living your life also it like is kind of becomes what the point what's the point um Mm. i'm interested in what your guys take is on this because for me a lot of that is achieved through like the lyricism um just because like that's obviously the medium i'm familiar with that's what i work with um and like making that connection via the lyrics and like hoping that you know you bring your truth and the hope that it resonates with them uh being the listener or whoever you're making the music with is does that translate into like something like painting or anything that's like a more physical medium is there like a way uh, how do i how do i phrase the question i'm trying i'm, I'm like well, circling guess, in on the it, question and i don't like yeah i guess i think what you kind of i kind of understand the question to be does that well i guess i guess how i think about i've actually thought about some uh, a concept similar to this where I was trying to break down or essentially or kind of ask the question, does different types of music or different executions of music affect different parts of the brain differently? You know what I mean? Because um, I think that the message with lyricism or with more acoustic music or with more folk, you know, lyric driven vocal music I feel like that mu- that that is a creation that is meant to be processed through your frontal lobe. That's like an intellectual, almost literary or poetic experience, while something like that is more music or instrumental or even something from everything from like you know, kick drum, fist bump rock music to dance, hip hop or EDM, like that music is is visceral and is targeting your limbic system which is more of like a thrill like fuck yeah like like let's get the fuck down kind of feeling you know what i mean hair stands up and shit yeah and i think that with painting or with visual art i think it can have both effects i think both things can happen depending on what type of painter you are where there are a lot of painters where it's meant to tap into a way more of a visceral uh, experience or more of something I you know what's funny is there really I don't know I don't really know a word that is the opposite of intellectual but doesn't mean stupid where it is something that is intellectual but it isn't meant to be processed in like a literary or literal you know I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say but like absurdism in a way maybe yeah yeah I, I definitely think it's absurd is I think you definitely have some interesting thoughts on this too Theo that I would love to hear but I feel like I've always differentiated the effect of lyrics and the effect of music where maybe both of these things could switch. We, these are, these are not cemented. Like I think music, I think something more visceral and instrumental can affect you a lot more intellectually than it does viscerally. Uh, like maybe something very technical or, or interesting or mentally stimulating while lyrics can switch and not be really literary anymore and then become more visceral and emotional. So I think this is kind of a a weird, like, infinity symbol dichotomy where I think both of these things are are each other while they are this different things. I don't know. Do you, I could talk about this probably. I could probably go on forever. Do you have any thoughts on this, Theo? Yeah, um, I think... Well, I think my answer goes in sort of a different direction. That's a really interesting point because I'm not a musician, so I haven't thought about it through that lens before. That's something I definitely want to chew on more. But my response as far as visual art I kind of try and seek this out too um (laughs) you can beep that um (laughs) I kind of try and seek this out too in terms of my artwork um I do a lot of stuff under the name earthworms that is I mean I do everything under earthworms but um comic style sort of things like one page comics has been something I've been honing in on a lot I've done them forever but they weren't really my primary sort of 
exp- mode of expression and I kind of delegitimized them a little bit in the past and didn't really think of them as real art but something that I realized sort of in the last year and a half or two years is that those kinds of things because they're operating through sort of they're more easy to send out and convey a message on Instagram or on social media, which is my primary platform for reaching an audience. Um, because it's quick, you look at it for one second, you kind of get the point. So I've been using that a lot to be a little bit more direct and in expressing vulnerability. And instead of maybe making comics that are like funny right off the bat or something, it's more kind of wry or emotional or like, um, excerpts from a dream journal or something that I'm going through, but in kind of a vague way sort of trying to tap into instead of literally saying like this is what I'm dealing with and here's a drawing of it or like this is a person I'm concerned about or something that I'm thinking about this is a portrait of them um maybe a still life and sort of a vague kind of poetic written caption so it's like kind of relatable to that audience but maybe not specific enough that it separates like somebody doesn't have to be in my exact shoes to get the feeling I'm kind of drawing a picture of that feeling and I think that's been the way that I've been trying recently through visual art to connect with people because I found that to be a lot more rewarding than things like just regular paintings and stuff recently um Mm. I don't know if that made sense well (laughs) definitely I think I think comics are I think unfairly categorized in kind of a lowbrow kind of sense like yeah you know why would why would you think of a Charlie Brown comic and Picasso in mm-hmm. the same category you definitely could and that'd be an interesting conversation to have but I guess yeah. I understand why some people see them as lesser but there are as me and you know like a lot of ext- like very notable and interesting uh, comic artists like Alison Bechdel is one that we've yep. talked about who yeah. wrote the books Fun Home uh, yeah, which is Fun Home is phenomenal yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know if book. you guys have ever seen the musical that I've not seen the musical it. oh it is oh. baller really <sighs> Yeah, I've been wanting to see it for a long time. I've only read the the graphic novel, but definitely that is definitely on my list, but Yeah. And you know, this is what you said too, like cuz that obviously you're making like very serious and interesting art about important and interesting concepts. You could even say that 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 anime and manga like faces like could face a a, a kind of stratification in oh, that absolutely. sense because like I there are I I I am not like a die-hard anime fan. But I've been friends with many of them over the years, and like, you know, there are people that have read manga or, you know, watched animes that changed their lives. Yeah. Or impacted them in extremely, you know, profound ways that, that stay with them. Yeah. You know, like most fandoms. Yeah. Or I get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of flack for it, but Tokyo Ghoul, the show, because I, I, I was one of the people that watched the show before I read it, and I don't watch a ton of animes. I'm very, very picky, and I don't have a lot of time. Um, but Tokyo Ghoul was definitely one of those for me, where, like, it had a lot to say, and it said it in a really pretty and not super direct way. And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> the, some Sometimes the medium just works. Yeah. That's actually, I mean, I think I had my anime phase in a pretty far in the past um I was a lot younger but that's actually how I learned to draw is by tracing panels from like bleach and fruits basket specifically mm. um uh, yeah <laughs> yeah and I remember crying over those books like I think it's interesting because if you I just want to clarify like I definitely don't think of it as a lesser medium anymore that was some ignorant like freshman in art school bullshit I was on at the time sure but um <laughs> I I think it's interesting because it's a way to pair like I don't have a lot I write poetry in my um like in my diaries and stuff but I don't really post it I don't really consider myself a poet but it making cartoons and making comics is a way to pair words with my imagery I do that with collage too a little bit but I think it can be more direct when it's a comic with a caption um Uh. where I don't have like I don't write music I don't do um like written word stuff publicly really so it's a way to be a little bit more direct than just visual symbolism which is really open to interpretation so I think it makes it easier to have a direct dialogue with an audience, especially if you're doing it like I'm writing a whole story and like it showing a character arc or something or something that a specific person is going through versus what I do, which is more one or two page panel stuff. Um, it's just a lot more direct when you're involving actual words. Um, that's a really interesting thing because it's actually funny because Fun Home came up. Musicals and comics are my two like favorite mediums of all times because of that, oh. and I think it's because they're on opposite sides of the same coin. Where a musical, if you look at it, it's the narrative going on, and at certain points, 
the emotion or the plot point is hitting such a fever pitch that there's nothing else to do but like sing a song about it so you're literally getting the most inner core um kind of value of whatever's going on and then the flip side of that is on the comics where you're getting the narrative and then everything that you're not being told you are seeing in a visual way that is such a cool way to think about it um, that, that's why, I mean, if anyone's ever listened to Bullpup or does listen to Bullpup, our whole thing is that we try to mirror um, musical theater in, like, a very punk way, but, like, follow that, like, narrative structure and kind of thing. That's, like, our whole shtick. Um, and, like, that's why. Like, I just adore that, those two ways of storytelling. And um, I, I draw a lot from, like, the visual aspect of comics a lot too like i think what mcr did when they did the um the whole danger days era yeah. was like one of the most brilliant things ever um there's just so much that can be told and I, in, a, in a lot of ways a lot of them end up being better than movies or books because you just get that like deeper level from either the song or the panels like you just can like sit with it longer or like get a more direct understanding and kind of a window into sometimes a completely different perspective than is even there yeah it's like breaking the fourth wall but there's like another barrier that is just like so much more ingrained in like cerebral to an extent you know it it plays your heart as opposed to exclusively your mind yes yeah that is so cool because it's almost like talking i was talking about like this like way that lyrics and music kind of rotate back and forth from affecting you intellectually and viscerally and that is such a beautiful way to just like unite all of this is that like comics mute and musicals and bullpup are that exist in that concept that's like (laughs) that's so cool that is profound that's a very nice thing to say about us. <laughs> no, it's true. I've I think seen, we I've try seen, really hard. I've seen you but, guys um, play many times and listen to the to No One Must Die many times, and I'm definitely excited for the up, uh, upcoming uh, adventures. Oh, uh, man, we just got the first cut of the music video this morning. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I'm so stoked. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll send the link over to you guys after this. Oh, great. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Um, not getting too off track though, that because I'm getting distracted. Um, <laughs> have you, have either of you um, read the Sandman by Neil Gaiman? You know, I haven't. I have not actually. So it's um, it's a comic series, but he essentially wrote it like as a book almost. It, it's it's really cool. It, it's like one of the quintessential comics. Like it's it it everyone has their own opinion on it. Some people are like it's so overhyped. Some people are like this is the second coming of Christ. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it very, very dearly, and the short, like, pitch on it, um, just because I think it really embodies what we're talking about, is um, there's all of these brothers and sisters, and they're the Eternals, and it's death, dream, desire, despair, destruction, and destiny, and it's all of them interacting with each other, and, like, doing their duties with the world, and like being in charge of that but they also have this human interplay and essentially throughout the narrative of the series they themselves become more human and like experience more humanity as opposed to just being these like eldritch gods and sometimes it's like really actiony and really like silly but sometimes it gets really really heady Mm. and there's you have things like well um lucifer has given up the throne to hell and is just giving the key away and all of these different religions are fighting for the key to hell and like all this power and everything and it ends up being this like weird analogy for all of humanity and how like cultures interact but also like what power struggle looks like and what the implications of like almost like sometimes there's like a government aspect to it and it just there's all these takes you can have from what ultimately is just like a really simple fantasy story with like cool demons and shit, but it ends up being like way deeper. And I think it's just a good example of, um, telling more of a story than is what is directly happening. Uh, if you were to just read a book or anything. So I would, I would definitely recommend it. I can lend it to you both if you were ever wanted it. Cause I have the full series. It's dope. That's I'm super cool. 
That's yeah. awesome. It's me. What a fucking world, man. I've, I've Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say just to like kind of add up to that. I think it's really awesome when comics or like any kind of media can do that. Like I mean, it seems like such a simple thing to have like something be an analogy for something kind of bigger, but it's kind of hard to pull off in a way that's really impactful. So it's awesome when you can see work doing that. Because I think that's when it gets more personal to the audience. Because if you are direct and you're making a story that is just about what that story is, you're appealing to a very specific audience of a person who's had this exact thing happen to them. But if you kind of bring it to a fantasy realm or bring it to a different level that is less direct, but it has that analogy, anybody that has an experience where you've had those same emotions can sort of relate to that. Yeah, and yeah, it's... it becomes like a personal takeaway. So it's almost yeah. like a different message for everyone. That's yes. dope. That's yeah. a good point. That's true. Almost like kind of like fables or like Greek myth and stuff because mm-hmm. and I think it's just so much more exciting too because like I don't know, like I am the type of person, you know, I've grown up. I grew up like I had a whole portion of my life where I had to th- learn about addiction and like, oh, this is what happened to this guy when he did drugs and this is how he overcame it and all this like grand stuff and I got so 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 bombarded for so long with these real life like gritty stories of of the the dark side of life and trying and shit like that that like this kind of like magical realism of 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 recovery and drugs and Boston accents and shit and like and like there's I knew the Boston accent was gonna come up I knew right. it was coming. and there's just something <laughs> so liberating and beautiful about sh- like fucking dragons and fucking swords and yeah. shit like and demons and eldritch gods and shit as opposed like experiencing the same emotions and hardships and and being on a this, like a journey just like me in this like beautiful universe rather than me just you know have fucking you know you know what I'm saying like like that shit like I don't know man like that's like I don't know I don't know like some examples might be beautiful boy with Steve Carell or like Mm. tweak by Nick Sheff the counterpart book or uh, un, uh, the the fucking Chris Heron movie. You guys probably haven't even fucking seen these, but like, <laughs> but like you know, uh, somebody listening might know what I mean. But like, there's just so much realism about trauma yeah. that if you're somebody that's experienced a lot of trauma and and really dark shit, like that realism isn't really helpful. Yeah. And that like, uh, that graphic, you know like deep dive into this crazy shit that happened isn't like isn't really i don't know sometimes it's a lot more tasteful to not even dive into that shit at all and to create a a a more interesting vehicle well it it runs two risks too right like it can either be triggering depending on how uh fresh the wound is or how serious whatever happened was or it can become a comparison thing Mm. and then because you're only getting like the whatever two hour movie or you know 150 page book and you're and it's wrapped up in a neat little bow and everything's all hunky dory and you don't necessarily see all the behind the scenes or all the time it took and you maybe are only like two months into this person's 20 year process that they're writing a book that you're going to finish in a week yeah you know and, and all of a sudden time starts fluxing and you start comparing it and you're like oh i'm fucked you know, like, cause I'm not, I'm not where this person was in their story. Um, mm. and it can be dangerous. And I think I get frustrated sometimes with like autobiographical stuff and like biographical stuff because sometimes the romanticizing and all of that, um, if you're, if the author or the narrator isn't necessarily being super responsible and like really thinking of who it is or uh, uh pause if they are not clear in who they are like aiming at as an audience and it ends up being pointed at someone that it's totally not going to be helpful for or could be really dangerous for it, it can just get out of hand really quick yeah it could i could almost see that like i could see that going in a lot of different directions almost like I don't know. Like, I think... Well, actually, I, I kind of lost that point. But, like, one thing that, that I immediately think about, too, is that, like, life is literally never linear. 
Yeah. Like story, like like we. I think that stories in our in in, in books and in these tales and narratives are only are linear because we don't have any like many other ways. Like I feel like it's kind of by necessity because mm. we can't tell. Like I feel like a lot of you know life and experiences are like this kind of mandala like spectrum of of story and happenings and points being interconnected like ad infinitum in a in a in a short number of years rather than like you know like this narrative arc of beginning middle and end hmm. like something that i think about a lot this is like a graph like a gross thing to say but like something i think about a lot when people which stories about real life and people and autobiographies and stuff is that you'll never see somebody take a shit <laughs> in one of those movies. Like you just don't see that. Yeah. Like they yeah. never write in a part where the person takes a shit or like flosses or something. Or like or yeah. If it is, <laughs> it, it's super comedic and it's like the butt of a joke as opposed to just being an earnest and real thing. Yeah. Which right, like, like what what does that say? You know? Right. Like there is like an incredible like I I don't know, man. Like there's so much that happens every day in real life that just would be pointless and weird to include in the story yeah. which makes it really unrealistic like i don't know like a pointless thing that happened to me recently i got gas at a gas station and there was a woman getting gas next to me nothing happened i left and then i went to the grocery store a few streets away and she was arriving at the grocery store at the same time as me and now you're married yeah <laughs> no and it was just so weird and i nothing and then i just left and i just thought about it all day and like and that that felt weird even wedging that into this conversation because it was so irrelevant but like i guess this is like this is a hard point to make but i guess what i'm trying to say is that like i think that true story books about real life are literally never true stories about real life yeah you know what i mean i have a um i have a theory that I, actually brian i feel like me and you have talked about this before like in passing but I have a theory that exactly that is why movies are getting longer and serialized television um, is becoming more popular than movies wow. in a lot of ways because you can be along for more of a ride and that inherently makes it more relatable and almost more um, like our like monkey brains can like process it more. And that's why stuff like Game of Thrones and, like, Westworld and all that, when it all came out, you know, they're hour-long chunks. You can digest it, and you always know that, like, something else is going to happen. But it's almost like living a series of days instead of seeing the highlight reel. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Like, I don't know, we probably have talked about that before, because I have talked about this with other people. But I, yeah, like, I watch movies now, and they're, like, weird. Yeah. Like, I feel like I watched a trailer for a show <laughs> when when seeing the movie. And, like, I think that that's, like, completely true because, like, I don't know. This is, like, a big generalized, like, bullshit take that I'm about to make, but I kind of believe it. But we live in such, like, a hot take world, like, such, like, a character limit world, so to speak, where it can be, like, I think a lot of people crave nuance mm -hmm. without really even knowing that they're that they're looking for that. Because we watch movies and TV and shit because, like, it's fun and we like it, but also because it's really easy versus you might have to go out of your way to enjoy a painting or to sit down and actually listen to an entire album. Like, mm. you know, there are people that just enjoy a song or a single and they save songs onto their phone. They don't save whole ass albums and collections, you know, like I, you know, whatever. But like, but TV and movies are so easy. And now there's like this break breakthrough cultural thing happening with media where I feel like a lot of these TV producers and writers and people making these serialized stories have found a way to bring that nuance to people that may may not have the time or the taste to experience a really, really long, nuanced piece of art. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's not a criticism of those people. Like, I, I completely understand. Like, I, I haven't read, I haven't literally just actually read a fucking book maybe in a couple years just because I'm constantly listening to podcasts and watching movies and shit and TV and stuff. So, like, if, like, that wasn't, like, because that's kind of an interesting thing because I've thought about, I've kind of asked myself almost guiltily why I don't read more these days. And I think it's because, like, when I was reading, I wasn't reading, like, academic texts. I, I was reading, like, fucking John Green books. 
<laughs> and like horrible like young adult <laughs> fiction and shit like I wasn't re- like I wasn't reading the literary canon of western art like I was like but like now I feel like some of the TV I watch gives me more like gives me more information more story and more, like I, I I love it even I enjoy it and get more out of it than I did possibly from some of the books I read well you know what I think is funny too because what I keep thinking of when we're talking about this is um this project I've been working on with my youngest brother Noah um of watching we've been working on it for like two years because he lives in Plymouth and I live in Boston but whenever we hang out or we get a chance to we watch a Marvel movie from the Marvel cinema- cinematic universe and I started doing it with him just as a bonding thing because he's really fucking into Spider-Man he loves Marvel like that's his thing and it has been since he was a little kid he's like 18 now and um we started doing it and I kind of never really cared I was like they're superhero movies they're action movies like this is very early 2000s for me but fuck it let's do it Mm. and um we've been watching all of them we just got to um uh Infinity War we're almost to watching Endgame and if you're not familiar um I mean everybody knows about this but I don't know if everybody knows the arc so I'll just recap it but do it essentially fuck it up (laughs) all of the movies coming from the early 2000s up until now each of them are backstory on each individual character and as it gets further and further towards the end the ones that came out in like 2018 2019 are all of the characters are involved in the same plot and they weren't until this last movie so Mm. we've watched like 20 of them and gotten backstory on all these different characters the reasons how they got their powers the reasons why they're heroes the reasons why they do what they do what their moral compass is like all of this shit and now they're in this battle and each of the movies are like action shots quick banter like blah 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 feels like filler but when you get to the end you are so like you know so much about all of these characters that seem two-dimensional if you were to just watch that movie that you're really invested in everything and you really care when all these things happen and they might be on screen for a total of 10 minutes in the last movie but you already have your opinions and it's been so cool doing that with him because i've realized how much it means to him and why because we'll talk about these characters there's like fucking 50 of them by the time you're done with it and we actually the other day we spent three hours working on a tier list and just ranked them all and like had heavy debate about each of them and why they were so great and I got to learn a lot about my brother through that because what he's watching it for and what he likes about it is relating to these characters and figuring out like his favorites are Spider-Man and Captain America and he really admires they both have a really strong moral compass um and that Spider-Man there was a situation where he had to save either like a bus full of kids or Mary Jane who's his main love interest and he saved the kids because he's a hero and that's what he had to do and he's 17 he still did that my brother's 18 and he fucking loves it and he's like that guy's awesome like that that he's the man like that's sick and like then arguing with him about like oh well why do you like Captain America and he's like well he's very patriotic I don't really fuck with that but he comes from a different time and he does what he has to do and sometimes he's a fugitive of the law and he doesn't even back America because they're making him sign the accords and they're taking away his autonomy and we're not really talking about the plot we're not really talking about those characters but we're talking about his values and his morals and why he likes them and there's so many of them that it gives him options to explore that and I think that's a really cool thing that um, literature and musicals comics like any kind of fantasy media can do because it's not really about the like fight with Thanos for the ring or whatever it's like it's about these characters and what they mean to him so I don't know that's kind of a totally different point maybe but I think it's really interesting what fantasy can do for that because it's totally escapist to me I didn't get the appeal at all at first because I was like this is these are superhero movies like it is what it is but it's not really mm. that's not really the point you know what I mean yeah and like our generation I think all of us are I think different ages but close enough in age that like all of us saw this happen with Lord of the Rings Harry Potter yep yeah. fucking uh, Doctor Who fucking I don't fucking know and with our parents they were all when we were kids they were all watching Sopranos yeah speculating about the characters in the same way or Lost or Lost I didn't, yeah. I've never even fucking seen a second of that show that show's good but like I'm <laughs> sure it's the same where it's like we explore like ideas and perspectives and these dilemmas and morals and yeah. experience humanity through these little maquettes on the on, you know and sometimes it doesn't matter if the plot itself or the characters themselves are nuanced. Like, we've been watching like, the shit out of Riverdale and Survivor recently. And it's like, the reason that we like those shows is because of debating the characters and why they did what they did. Is this in character for them? Does this make sense? Uh, it doesn't matter if it's fucking ridiculous or, like, the plot is insane, because it is, if you watch Riverdale at all. Dude, yeah. But it's more about, like, the analysis of the person and personality types. Like, in the same yeah. way that you'd be friends with, like, 700 people in high school and didn't really fucking know any of them very well, but you're just kind of observing their narratives. Mm. It's the same thing with media like that. And I think that's what I really like about young adult media. Wow. I don't know. I might have just totally changed the point of this conversation. <laughs> no, it's I, I don't think you did at all, to be honest. <laughs> I, um, I had, like, a million points. 
One, I, w- I didn't want to interrupt you, though, because you were making good points. Thank One, you. <laughs> um, you and your brother, if you guys are into podcasts, should really look at um, this uh, podcast company that I adore with my whole heart. They're just a bunch of silly assholes um, called Kind of Funny. And they actually do movie series in review and the whole point is that they rank them against each other oh cool so they'll do like all of the jurassic parks all of the star wars they did the mcu and that was like their big flagship one Ooh. Um, and you know they come from all different walks of life uh so they all have like their own takes on it and you know it's mostly like silly and like funny haha but they occasionally they like get into deep discussion like that yeah and uh, if that's something that interests you i would i would recommend that it's pretty cool yeah that but, sounds dope I, in all of that, and Brian had kind of mentioned it earlier with the, um, the John Green books as opposed to reading, like, real literature in air quotes, <laughs> I always, like, hated that there were some things, especially in, like, school and stuff, that they were like, well, this is, like, a real book. You're not reading a real book. If it's enriching your life or you're having any amount of a takeaway from it, is it really, like, why is it being delegitimized? Yeah. In a way, like, mm. there are... Sure, the MCU isn't, like, a Wes Anderson film or, like, (laughs) Lady Bird, but that doesn't mean that there isn't, like, any amount of subtext or that it's, like, complete, like, crap and not enriching. Like, even something like Predator, you know, which is just, like, super cheesy 80s action flick, that doesn't mean that there's not something there that connects with you on a deeper level, even if you can't really put it into words. Like, there's a reason that movie was really, really popular, and yeah. I don't know. I it, it, I get I get a little miffy when uh, when people just like decide and don't decide like what is and isn't like intellectual or not. Because like if you go all the way back to like something like Shakespeare, th- th- those were the soap operas at the time. Yeah. You know, or yeah. like Great Expectations, which was what Dickens um, was like a soap opera at the time, and like people would look at that in like general hospital in the same way for the time and now we're studying it yeah like what the fuck (laughs) (laughs) like so who's to say who's the authority yeah i want to know i want to find them i have words it's it's (laughs) funny too because like if you asked me like if i just like i don't know if you ask like a lot of different people like what highbrow serious like high art music is they might say jazz or like classical music or i don't fucking know or like you know, like a Baroque, like, fucking orchestra or something, you know, but, like, and, like, maybe that's true, like, sure, whatever, but, like, um, it's kind of funny, though, because, like, some of the closest, some of, most of the people I've known in my life, and in me, for example, like, you know, as dorky as it is, like, like, I was, like, raised by, like, like, pop punk, Mm-hmm. music like you know like and these like band like these you know these like kind of like silly like warp tour bands that like now it sounds so like melodramatic and ridiculous to listen to some of the lyrics that i identified with at the time at me <laughs> right, like, but like yeah now we write the that music you know what i mean but like yeah no i feel yeah. and it's funny because like that is like supposedly like lesser than like it's like this almost relates to what we were talking about with comics and graphic novels and the MCU or is that what it, I don't know yeah. and you know like it's like really interesting because like I feel like what we've kind of said in a lot of different ways is uh, I don't know if I can like really like distill this into like one like clean nice point but like it's almost like you know it it, it really doesn't the presentation there's a lot of hypocrisy in in the way we think about the presentation of, of art i just got really distracted it looked like that guy that just walked by there dropped something out he of his did bag. i noticed that yeah too. we just yeah. watched a guy lose something and we will never be able to help him um <laughs> that sucks for that guy uh, whatever that was that guy lost some shit and yeah. he's fucked now dude fuck that guy yeah, yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> who could say what that was but yeah no it's like i don't even know but like yeah, I think you said it, Trevor, that, like, it really doesn't matter what it is or how it's how it's presented or what the, you know, what the, what the, what the frame and presentation around it really looks like. If it's affecting you in a profound way and, like, it means something to you, then it, then it, then it's the world. You could even say that 
about this podcast or about people who might like this podcast. Like, we literally don't have a microphone right now. Yeah, we're using You know how we're doing this? (laughs) We're on a phone call with you, Trevor, with one phone, and we're recording a voice memo with another, and we're just sandwiching them together (laughs) and just recording this. That's how this is being done. I love that. It probably, you can probably tell if you know anything about recording that this isn't like a a big old production. But it's lo-fi. But yeah, that doesn't mean this conversation isn't like, I don't know, you know, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. whatever. I, don't know. whatever. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I notice and I listen to every episode, sometimes multiple times. Oh, so, and So, like, obviously the quality of the uh, work itself is far outweighing whatever technical hurdles you got a hurdle <laughs> right yeah wow what the I, you know you've changed my mind i've decided that i am the highest caliber of artist now and uh i totally yeah. deserve to be here so thanks for uh blowing all the smoke up my ass and Any i'll time. expect payment uh because my my time is money now that <laughs> good I, uh, I'm a big official artist Fuck yeah yeah that's that's amazing <laughs> It's so funny too, because like even with people that I really that like, and I think that you are an amazing artist. Like I'm not saying that I don't think you are, but like even people who are like the larger than life famous people that make great stuff, sometimes it like I don't even care what they think about what they're making. It's interesting to hear them talk about things that don't even relate to art. Yeah, you know, or to just hear perspectives on life. Even calling back to what we talked about earlier, it's just about it's kind of interesting conversational. I don't know. Yeah. Slice of life podcasting. You know what else is funny too? Talking about like young adult media and like what can, is considered legitimate or what isn't. This is like so random, but I was watching a video the other day of Miley Cyrus now covering some of her music that was her solo career stuff around the same time that she was doing Hannah Montana. So like songs that she wrote about being in love with boys when she was like fourteen, and it's so fucking funny. Like the uh, what the name? But I don't remember what the name of the song is, but I know every lyric. But she's like, there's one where she says, um. I just kept looking down. I stuttered when you asked me what I'm thinking about. Um, my best friend Leslie said she, she's just being Miley. And she's singing this, and it's like she's fucking Miley Cyrus, and she's singing it the way that she sings now as an adult woman. But that's the shittiest lyric ever. And like, it's so, but it's so authentic to her having been a 14 year old girl and writing this. And she, I think the chorus of the song is like, she's, I'm determined that next, it's See You Again. That's the song. She's like, okay. when I, that's the one that's the ripoff of Sunglasses at Night, right? Maybe. I don't even know. I, I was 14, so. and I loved it. So. I, 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 I very much know what song. I love that song. <laughs> it's so good. And I remember listening to that when I was 14 And me and my younger brother We shared a room and we had a little um, cassette player CD player We had this one song on CD We used to fucking scream the lyrics to that song And it is the worst fucking song ever But when I was watching this video of her singing it now It was like that was What is she so... like 29? Uh, yeah probably <laughs> And she was singing it totally differently But she was singing the actual lyrics And she goes like I just stuttered when you asked me what I'm thinking about And I was like this sucks But I love it so much Because I remember being 14 And this being so authentic to my experience and yeah. the way that I was seeing the world and the way she was seeing the world and what she did was she was being authentic and it sucked because she was 14 and she sucked and everybody sucks when they're 14 <laughs> but it's like that's the point like that's what makes it good art and like I don't yeah. care I don't know it was we all too cool. we're just being Miley yeah. seriously yeah it's kind of like when you were talking about when we were at the skate park yesterday and that kid that was talking to you yeah well, another thing you guys did is you were drawing in your sketchbook and he asked if he could draw a little picture in there too yeah, he I just, like, forget. took it. I and was it, like, okay. It was Aww. funny because you guys <laughs> tried funny. to draw a scooter on the same page. Yeah. And you, as an adult with, like, an art background, were able to draw, a, like, a, a good look, a good scooter drawing. I I was really fascinated by what he had tried to draw. Yeah. And it just kind of reminded me of that Picasso quote where it's, like, you know, the, the one everyone knows, uh, took me 25 years to paint, like, a master and a lifetime to paint, like, a child. And it was interesting to see this kid, like, just reduce a scooter. It was interesting because he drew this horrible scooter, which was, like, three rectangles, essentially. (laughs) Just shittily, like... But it it was really interesting because it was the way people think about abstract art in this, like, super high-concept way of, like, this, like, really distilled and broken down into its essential forms representation of a scooter. You know what else is You know what I mean? By a child. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, like that. And I guess it's kind of interesting because when we think about when we read our old journals uh, yeah. from when we were kids or hear Miley Cyrus singing about being a, a young girl yeah. on Disney Channel. Just being Miley. Yeah. Yeah, just being Miley. Like you're, 
Like, it's almost like that Picasso quote, but in, like, an emotional life way where it's, like, Miley Cyrus and her team at the time were able to time capsule this, like, really beautiful essence of yeah. what was probably just a, a, you know, she was probably just a silly kid. Just yeah. a, just a Just a little girl. Just, like, doing kid stuff or whatever the fuck she did at the time and another thing that was cool i'm like i'm outing myself as a diehard hannah montana fan when i was a kid but fuck yeah go on was it? she had miley or she had a solo career doing songs as miley that were about like she had one about her grandfather dying and about um trying to become famous when her dad was billy ray cyrus and like what that was like trying to create her own brand and like what it was like to be hannah montana and then she had hannah montana songs that were like pre-packaged like bubblegum pop like this is just like for disney channel kind no, of music. Cute music but she was doing that at the same time so her solo albums from that time are really interesting because it was she was being very raw and authentic but also being 14 which is really cool but um another thing i was going to say about that kid is we did three pages of drawings because he just wanted to do a drawing contest with me because i had my sketchbook he just really i don't know why he was vibing with me so hard but he just mm-hmm. came over and was because like, you weren't draw. bullying him and vaping and i felt so bad because he went up <laughs> and he talked to that scooter guy and he was like i have a scooter Shut too the fuck up. he literally was like no thanks i don't share and he just scooted away Get from away the kid from me. And i was like what the fuck so he came up to me and he's like do you think my scooter's cool and i was like yeah dude <laughs> that's yeah, sick that's, whatever that's dope scooter <laughs> And then he came over to me and he was like, can I draw on your sketchbook? And I was like, okay. And he's like, we'll do a drawing contest. Let's both draw a house. And I drew a house and he drew a house on the same page. And he was like, my house sucks. Yours is so good. How did you do that? And I was like, I just, I don't know. I have more practice. Like you're eight. It's fine. And then <laughs> we did another one. He's like, let's draw a tree house. I drew a tree house and he drew a tree house. And he's like, mine sucks. Yours is so good. And then we drew two scooters and it, I drew a scooter and he drew a scooter. And like, not to like toot my own horn but I drew a pretty good scooter it was a good scooter drawing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like he was like your scooter has no parts like where's this thing on the scooter how are you gonna tighten your handlebars if it looks like that and I was like oh I don't I don't scoot and he's like this you is how you shit. yeah he's like your scooter drawing fucking sucks and he added all I these little details good. he added details to mine yeah <laughs> and he was like his it was like three rectangles had all of the parts in it that you need to ride a scooter and this kid uh-huh. knew how to scooter and loved scootering so my drawing sucked dude yeah and that's so fucking funny cause like I loved it it's yeah. great. People are always trying... People always talk about reducing forms to their essential shapes and painting and, you know, fundamentals and, like, capturing essences and art and stuff. And then, you know, there's this, like, Picasso, Cubist, you know, abstract expressionist way of thinking about art, which is to try to capture things like a child would. Yeah. But, like, it's so... Such a fucking hypocrisy that we don't think of Hannah Montana bubblegum pop the same way. Yeah, or John oh my Green God. books. It's like you hear so many people on the internet say when they post like a selfie of them wearing some like wacky fun outfit that they're going to the store in saying like I'm dressing exactly how teenage me wanted to dress. Like I am I am the I am my inner child hero. Yeah. Right now. And it's so funny. Yeah, that's so interesting because I think I was kind of missing that. You know, maybe some other people caught onto that before I did, but I've only thought about this kind of thing with art. I've thought about this with, you know, like, there's the whole therapeutic mindset of healing your inner child and... Oh, yeah. And this and that. And then there's another one that's, you know, try to reduce forms to their essential shapes to be a better artist. And I think that's the thing. I mean... This is, like, the same concept. To delve a little bit, just very quickly, into my background, like, I have... I'm three semesters away whenever I fucking go back to school and finishing a degree in um, art therapy with the focus in child psychology. So I love talking about this shit because I think that something that's talked about maybe a little bit too much in therapy circles and like online discourse is healing your inner child and i think there should be more focus on just connecting with and embodying your inner child hanging out with their inner child yeah because that is just a version of you that was not refined yet by society and in some ways that's a good thing that gives you the tools to not be a fucking rude asshole like the kid that came up to you and was like you're sweaty yes at the skate park on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, or when you're like this is a morning park like this we should we should definitely be here in the morning this is a morning park and kid came up and he's like this is a skate park not a morning park <laughs> um, I was like shit Yeah so like I, As you get older You learn not to do that shit But you also learn Like to be ashamed Of some facets of yourself And to like not want to be Your like 14 year old I'm really Like you were saying The MCR Danger Days era That was my shit And I loved that And I still love that But I think there was part of me That was like Oh I'm not gonna Talk about this in public Until right, like, like recently Like I'm a dork Yeah and then I was like This is fucking dumb Like why not <laughs> Who gives real a talk. fuck Real <laughs> talk Literally like, real, real real talk That's like Why Um I dress the way I do for bullpup and I I do makeup and I wear fishnets and shit because it's just like a it's like I don't know 
I, I treat every show like it's going to be my last show. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not, no one owes me their time or attention. You know what I mean? And every time I have that, I'm like, I'm going to make the most of it. Yeah. And just be exactly what I wanted to when I was 12 and just like do that. Because if I didn't, what's the point in putting all this work in and like getting these people's attention for what it is. And so I can just be what I wanted to when I was 12. But also if you lead by example, and this kind of bleeds into the bullpup ethos I was talking about earlier with just like making those connections and everything. The whole point of bullpup is just to like empower others to just be able to do that and like hope that we all lift each other up yeah, and like encourage each other to just do what they need to and like keep each other safe and shit like that. And if I can do that on all fronts, both with like the audio and the visual and just in as many ways impossible, embrace and embody that. If that can help like anyone else just feel like for even five seconds, a little bit more comfortable with themselves and more comfortable being there, then that's like the tits, you know? Like, that's <laughs> that awesome. Is the tits. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. Um, wow. Can I make a request? Yeah. Can oh the cover for this episode please be the scooter that you and this kid tag teams? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my God. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a really that's a good plan. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What an huh. exciting... This has been a. This has been such a good... I, I want to just keep going. I know. Oh, my God. Yeah, this, this is, is a so weird fun. one. I love it. This I, been... got, I got nothing but time. We can, like, keep pulling. I've got plenty to say. Yeah, I going? also... I have a second request. Yep. Um, not to put any pressure on y'all. Can we get the Theo episode sometime? Ah! Like, the background episode. That's so funny <laughs> because we basically finished it, but... But Theo... Then I decided I hated it. Thanks to... No, I get that because I've been there. Like, I've been there. <laughs> Um, I forgot we that we teased it. Doc. Oh, we, we have a studio doc for the album that's coming out, and I filmed, like, hours worth of footage from the very first note we wrote to, like, all the post-production ending. That's and awesome. I have redone the narration six times. And I'm still <laughs> going to redo it. So, like, I get it, but also I'm just, I am a big fan, and I like what you both do. And thank I'm you. Really oh, thank interested. you. Oh, what yeah. an amazing thing. Oh, maybe we'll finish it then. We we did like 45 minutes of it and we're shooting for like an hour and a half. And right. then I think I think if we were recording and we did yours and then we did mine right after and it was like 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, we we're, were... like, we have to fucking tap out. We were on some never, shit. Yeah. That's what happens every time we record. Like, I'm sure whenever we're done with this episode, me and Theo are going to be like, let's do another one. I was just thinking that. Let's make more. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to do that. <laughs> yeah, so we, we usually... That usually happens. Yeah that we get all hyped up so that one got a little bit Ugh. but we'll, we'll yeah whatever Ugh, maybe i will post it you just need the hype oh, you just need trevor to say that yeah. you needed trevor yeah, to say I'm that trying to, i'm trying i'm trying to be encouraging not be like an asshole and be like where's the episode i'm trying to be like, hey <laughs> i i'm i'm really invested in this and i think that what you guys do is cool please <laughs> <laughs> thank you i appreciate that okay fine i'll do it i guess maybe i'm not a doctor nice <laughs> nice You're definitely even not if a it's a re-record <laughs> <laughs> my 12 year old self would want me to finish the episode probably yeah your 12 year old self probably would have already finished the episode my 12 year old self your 12 year old self like... was probably being Miley yeah honestly yeah. <laughs> or my best friend Leslie I don't know one right. or the other this is a reference that I didn't get my best friend Leslie said oh she's just being Miley oh, the next oh, time we okay. hang out I will redeem myself my heart can't rest till then Whoa, yeah, it's whoa, literally why? sunglasses at night. <laughs> I wear my sunglasses at night. Da, 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 da. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. The same. I still love it, but it is still literally the same song. <laughs> she was 14. It's fine. Oh, Actually, I don't even queen. know if she was 14. Was I was, but she might not have been. Who knows? Well, she might have, yeah. Well, she, she might have been 14 like when she wrote when it. When she mm. wrote, did that oh, one. Because yeah. I think when she was like six. 16, 17, I'm, I'm completely kind of talking out of my ass here, but I'm just like, what tracks to me? She did like The Climb when the movie came out, and that was when she was like kind of getting into the older years for like Disney Channel. Mm. Yeah. So. Remember when she tweeted, Hannah Montana is dead? <laughs> Dude, remember when Taylor Swift was like, uh, old Taylor's dead, and then we were like, nah, it's not the same. She was an adult <laughs> woman when she did that, though. That was on another level. She, she really, she really said I'm that girl. <laughs> I was like, nice, dude. Taylor Swift's role in pop culture is to be that girl, I feel like. I yeah. both respect and fear it. <laughs> yeah. You should get uh, Miley Cyrus on this show. I was thinking that. Wouldn't that be fucking sick? Yeah, dude, I'll hit her up. I got yeah. I got her I got her number. We got We're tight. 
<laughs> Miley's cool enough that she probably would do it. Like, if you somehow got through to her, she's like, she seems like a party girl enough to like just be like, yeah, I'll do it. That would be so fucking crazy. That'd be awesome. You never know, man. When you know, maybe, maybe if we do this podcast for like five thousand episodes or something, <laughs> or like some fucking absurd amount of time, it could grow. Every episode, you just have to be like, guys, tweeted Miley Cyrus. It's kind of yeah, right. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, for like six years. Yeah. Oh my god. It would. Uh, yeah. It's funny too because like it's this actually is kind of like not to make it serious because it's a really funny conversation. It's so fucking hot in this it's car. It's so hot in this I'm, car. I'm like sweating bullets, but There's, um, like, sweat on I just don't want to like blast the AC too loud to like fuck up the recording. No, leave it on how it is. It's all okay, good. All I don't right. even give a shit. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny because like we definitely have not been picking the like in terms of like growth and podcasting and like analytics and shit. Yeah. We have not been making this podcast with that shit in mind and we've been just trying to think of like who the actual who actually would be a really great guest or like who would be a really great conversationalist or who would add something really profound and wonderful to the conversation versus you know maybe there are some people that we have in our pocket or that we know of or that are around that might be able to boost us in some way and like we're just not even fucking doing that which is actually kind of gnarly because i don't go about good. a lot of things that way like even my own work i do have a lot of stuff that i do for my own like personal development but a lot of the yeah, time you get, I'm, a little, like, you get a little plays here and there there's nothing wrong with that yeah but i think a lot of the time like i'm in my like business um insights on my instagram every fucking day looking at my yeah. analytics like promoting posts like trying to yeah. get my shit out there and i think that's just part of the game but I don't. I ha- we haven't done that with this. I We've haven't been, even looked at the analytics once. I've like low key been like. I don't know like, how to. I've been like slight. I like have not helped you. Like, I know because you don't want me to look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to like to hoard them. They're actually they're they're fine. We got some. We got like. I don't have anything on Spotify, so I don't know how to look. There's at a them. good amount of people <laughs> that have listened to a minute or two of, of each episode. Which is insane to I'm me. That's about. insane. <laughs> Because the fact yeah. that we're not scripting any of this and we're just doing it is, like, I kind of just expected everyone to be like, okay, Theo, like, <laughs> you're yeah. just talking. It's, it's, it's so hard because that's something we covered a lot in the, I'm not, I could, uh... Why are I you could, at Star Market? I don't know why the fuck I'm here. Why'd I'm, you go to Star Market? I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, shit. Sorry. Um, uh, Take another fat right. Yeah, hit it. Take another right. Hang a right um, into this fucking old person <laughs> loading up their groceries. Um, uh... <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck was I just saying? Fuck. I don't know. Um, oh, something uh, we talked... Episode. Oh, yeah, something we <laughs> talked about in a lot of the early ones was vulnerability. Yeah. Because we grapple with that in our own lives, probably, and in our personal relationships and stuff, like, just making sure, or, like, you know, using vulnerability correctly, or being able to, or being able to opt into it, and when mm. it's the right time, and, like, and it was really tough because we were being super vulnerable on this show or kind of grappling with whether or not we should or how to do that or what to say and what not to say and that was super super fucking hard at first yeah and it was really stressful and like but I think we found a happy medium where like I don't know because I think there was a lot of fear for me because I was like man like I've I have said dumb shit online many times as a kid and I was like I think some of the fear was thinking that I was doing that again it's interesting, too, because, like, I don't... Like I said before, I don't really write music, so I don't have the, as much of this experience, but I've seen you do this, Brian, and I'm sure you've had this experience, too, Trevor, of, like, writing lyrics that are very personal, and that's awesome for the art, and then once you put it out there, you're like, fuck, like, what if yeah. this is bad? And I think I haven't yeah. had... Like, I'm talking and just unfiltered saying what I actually think and how I actually am for, like, an hour and a half every week now, and I've never had an experience like that. So it's weird because it's like any criticism that I get, which you do get criticisms with anything that you put out publicly, is a criticism of me. Like it's real. It's not my product. It's not a t-shirt that I'm selling. It's not like a comic that I made knowing people would look at it. It's just me saying bullshit for an hour and a half. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. And you know, it's like that's so much scarier, but it's also so much more valuable too because there have been so many times where people say like, oh, it's a wonderful painting or a great set or like whatever. Yeah. Where I'm just like, thanks. And it doesn't affect me at all. But like... If I said, like, my truth and, like, like everything that I believe and care about and this is how I feel about this and here are my thoughts, like, this is who I am and then someone said, great job, then that would be Whoa. so much more powerful <laughs> than, like, a painting of a, of a floating head. 
<laughs> like that doesn't like the fact that they think that's cool doesn't yeah. mean say anything about what they think about me. Interesting. So yeah. it's like thanks, like any like thanks. I made that whatever. Yeah, true. <laughs> and I think there's also an element like maybe I'm just an asshole. I'm about to out myself as being a douche right now, but I feel like sometimes I make art about really personal things, but I keep it vague enough that I have this insulation in my head of like if someone says they like it, I'm like, okay, cool. You didn't get it. <laughs> like, oh yeah. You like, don't know what this is really about, which is why you like it. If you did, you'd hate it. So like, I'm just gonna take the compliment. Tricked though, another one. Yeah, it's like I I outwitted you. Yeah. <laughs> you like my art because I orchestrated that, not because I'm good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just good at fooling you. Yeah. Versus something like this, it's like I kind of can't. Like I don't even remember half of what I said in this hour. Oh yeah, I, I don't remember <laughs> that. I definitely have some highlights because that's one thing too that we that you probably know, Trevor, as a listener, that we just, we just don't even fucking we don't even fucking edit at all. <laughs> Barely anything. Balls to the wall. Yeah, straight to it. It's like it's like exclusively like pee breaks and McDicks. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the only time there's a break. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Dude, you know, I have a confession to make too. There was one absolutely like Oh, I know what you're about to straight say. Straight right up now. like risky piss break that I took one time <laughs> during one episode. <laughs> two times you did that. Really? Well, one of them was was the cat cat uh there's a cats part, episode. There's a fucking part in the episode of Cat <laughs> where you can hear the car door open and close cuz Brian went and took a piss on my car tire during the fucking conversation. I'm well, talking I and had, they just dipped. I, I was like, "Where are you going?" It was an emergency. <laughs> I it was like too early to like give a good ending or something. It was like too in the middle I, and I just yeah. snuck out broad daylight a minute, in a parking though. lot pissed on the car. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it was fine. I just like I stalled. For you a second, did it. So you you back, you, yeah. you you. Uh, I didn't know where you were going. Though. I wonder I like, how obvious end? it is in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> like you just ended the conversation. You're gone. They're walking yeah. home. <laughs> and I just got back and I was like, "Yeah, okay." I didn't notice it. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, that was because I I was like gonna die. I was like, "Oh my fucking!" God. Like the only that that like iced coffee. I have to pee. Yeah. Feeling. It, we made it work. Yeah. Anyway. Your kidneys are turning inside out, and you're yeah. just like fucked. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> the point funny. of the conversation is like scattered right now, but. Oh fuck. I don't. I don't, I don't know what know. we're talking about. I don't know what to what I should title this one. I can't. Uh, comic comic books and what is art with Fucko the clown. <laughs> Fucko the clown. Um, the clown. <laughs> <laughs> you should do that. <laughs> Who the who, what? <laughs> Fucko the <laughs> Alright. Oh I love it. Holy shit. Brian Hunter's Fucko the Clown and Trevor Sullivan. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. What a fucking good ass time, dude. Seriously. Oh, so I don't want I we've this has been a good episode. I want to keep it going, but I do think that we What are we at two hours? Water. Right now? No, we're at an hour and thirty seven minutes. Okay. It's probably the longest episode so far. Yeah, definitely the longest interview. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because I don't shut up. It's okay. My laptop no, is, good. like, on the verge of death anyways, too, so we can we can wrap if you guys got it. <laughs> I think my AC actually isn't working right now. Yeah. Oh. Thing. Yeah, it's just, like, hot as fuck in this car right now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, have, we also my don't... My dog has been snoring this whole time also. I hope it's not oh, being that's so up. sweet. Oh, no, oh. I, didn't, I didn't hear it at all. Fucking loud. You have a beagle, right? I do. I have my stinky little beagle who found uh, where all the rabbits were located in the backyard finally and brought a baby into the house last night. Oh, my oh. God. And, uh, I mean, he's he's never hurt a creature in his life. He just, like, carried it in. He was like, look. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I was, like, playing, like, Monster Hunter with Tim. And I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? And there's just a bunny in my kitchen. I had to go deal with it. That's awesome. Oh, jeez, that's so funny. Yeah, beagles are, are smart, smart dogs with that, that nose of theirs. What's your beagle's name? Um... His name is Django. He is almost 11 years old. He's 11 Beagle, which means he has no black on him. He's only butterscotch and white, but these days he's mostly gray. He's Aww. my old man. You know, he's boy. my stinky old man who I Cute. love, but also drives me crazy. I love that. <laughs> what a sweet guy. He's a homie. He's chill. He's aight. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. Well, this has been a fucking, yeah, this has been a good one. Should yeah. we wrap? I think so, just because I need to, like... Yeah, we need to recuperate. Need water. Yeah, just get some water. It's okay. Well, Trevor, I, uh, thank you fucking... Can I selfishly plug? 
Oh, yeah, totally. yeah. Tell us what do you got? Cool. What do you got coming up? Tell us. I don't want to be that it. guy, but uh, hopefully, um, within the first two weeks of June, um, the first single off of our upcoming album "Be Evil" will be out, uh, along with some music videos and other cool stuff. Um, we're doing four singles. Uh, most of them, if not all of them, will have video or like a lyric video at some point, and we'll be releasing all through the summer. "Be Evil." Hopefully, the full album is going to drop in September. And uh, there's some neat things. Uh, you can find us at Bullpup Band on all socials. I also do a podcast called Death to the Scene Network that Brian has been on before, mm. um, which is just about breaking the barriers between scenes and no clicks and no bullshit and just kind of hanging out. Um, we do album reviews and stuff like that sometimes too. It's been a little iffy during COVID, but as soon as things get safer, that's going to make a comeback as well. Uh, otherwise, I'm just kind of an idiot. But, like, <laughs> if you ever want to talk, like, friend me on social media and just, like, talk to me. Like, it's cool. <laughs> I, I, I just hang out, you know? Awesome. Yeah, oh, when yeah. Uh, when you're putting out the albums, we'll uh, we'll have to have you on again. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, we don't we don't really have any policy on uh, doubling up, so we'll just fucking bring you back. Literally any time. Uh, I love you guys. This is a cool show, and I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for being on. Yeah, this has been an awesome conversation. Thank you. Let us know when you're vaccinated. Hopefully we can hang out in person sometime soon. Yeah. After we're... next week. After Fuck next yeah. week. Literally Monday. So it'll be uh, it'll be tight. Maybe you can teach me how to skate because yeah. I've had a longboard forever, but I've never skateboarded and I'm like really bad at tricks. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really we'll, bad too. But... We'll, we'll, <laughs> nice. We'll, we'll party. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you All so right, much. Go. Yeah, no problem. I'll see you guys later. All see right. Later. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. You. All right. Okay. So Trevor has been disconnected my thumb i can't even feel my fucking thumb holy shit <laughs> i'm holding the phone for so long oh my god i would have taken it from I, I didn't know how to communicate that i'm a i don't know i'm a bad communicator <laughs> just kidding all right guys that was boston art podcast that was our amazing guest trevor you heard all that shit we'll talk to you guys later oh that was a that was a good one it was a good one that, that was, was exhausting fun. but it was a good one all right see you guys bye bye